is a place of freedom, of comfort. Uh, home follows you wherever you are. It's not in the location. This is my roots. This is where I grew up, and this is where I'm most comfortable with. Homeless is much more of an ideal that I carry with me, and that's expressed in temporary locations. Whenever I think of home, it's like I have pictures in my head, and it's like the place where I live right now. It's the people that make the home, not the, not the building itself. There are 16 apartments here, and we're all probably just as different as 16 people could be. There are some doctor nurses across the way, and we, they leave it uh, when we're getting out of bed, and they come home after our supper meal is all over. They just use it as a place to sleep, literally, but for us, where it's home, and we've made, we've personalized it. We've painted some of the walls here the way uh, this, you probably, perhaps it's very subtle. This wall over to your left has a little darker color. This is, see, this is white. Look at that edge and you can see the difference. There are two worlds in my life here and in China, and they don't really in intersect at all. They're like parallel words. So whenever I fly back to China, I live in another, in, in another world. My name is Ruo Dan, and I'm from China. I came here about like almost four years ago to um, study in the U.S. One of the interesting things about home is that certainly in the past, there's often been a tendency, especially in the European past, to imagine society as consisting of households, just sort of little, like little kingdoms, usually with a man at the top of the pyramid and members of the household in, in, in rank degrees of subordination, you know, adult females, adolescent males, so on and so forth, all the way down. And this would often include live-in servants or this kind of thing. And there's a very strong sense that a, a structured home, a structured place of residence, is very important in, in making people people. There's a very strong sense that people who don't belong to households are inherently suspicious. Well, I'm Ken O'Brien. I'm homeless and I have a, a small business selling books on the street. I have a very small $2 book stand um, with a great location in Harvard Square, which I had to fight the city to have and be arrested to, in order to prove that what I was doing was constitutional. I spent most of my life, more of my life homeless than I have not homeless. I have a small family, which two of which are in back of me and one she'll be back. My family consists of a dog, a cat, and a very good woman. Harvard Square was my home right to begin with before I left to go on the road and, and hitchhike. And I grew up about five blocks from Harvard Square. I went to grammar school at, in a Harvard Square location and went to uh, Cambridge High School and all of that. Yeah. But this is my roots. This is where I grew up and this is where I'm most comfortable with. <coughs> and. I've traveled enough that I don't really want to travel anymore and I'd like to settle down and I, I want to come back here. I think we now have a different relationship in a sense to the space where we live than people did four or five hundred years ago and a lot of that has to do with just how mobile we now are um, and it's that's partly a matter of traveling to more places and, and, and in a sense living our lives in a wider space. People always ask international students like if they are homesick, like if they miss their parents or something. It doesn't really, it doesn't usually happen to me except twice. Like when I came, well, when I came back from China and when I um, had to like say moving to another home and when I was like stressed, I kind of like had 
uh, like homesickness a little bit. But most of the time, because I'm really like really independent, so it's I I'm not homesick and I don't miss that home that much. My name is Miira Solaf, and um, I created Nested Homes, which is um, the exhibition that we're sitting in right now. Um, I was inspired to do a project about um, how people create home. I'm a senior in college at Brandeis, and um, I've been really thinking about the intention that goes into creating a space your own. And this particular year, I'm living in a space that is a kitchen. I've really felt like more than ever that like my space now is like my own and like very much a home. And so I kind of got me thinking about like how people manage this, ex manage like creating a home space, um, whether they're in college or whether they're out of college. Like I don't live in my childhood home anymore at home. Um, my parents moved away. And Home is just much more of an ideal that I carry with me and that's expressed in temporary locations. There's no meaning in the buildings, there's no meaning in the objects, there's only meanings in the relationships you have with those people that, in the objects that you've made in that space. And it's all about relationships and then when you take the, and when you take buildings outside, homes outside of their normal context like Meera's installation does, it makes you realize that even more. It makes everything more poignant and more expressive. I developed a questionnaire which is right here. Um, with questions like, what is something that has importance to me? What is something that gives my home smells? Um, and uh, I gave cameras to people, disposable cameras, to people to respond to the questions. And um, that way, people would have to think really concretely. And it would be a combination of visual and text. And uh, what kind of came out was that it wasn't, it didn't matter what stage of life people were at really, but um, kind of broke down into, I'd see like four different ways people experience home that I discovered after doing this. And um, one is that some people are very, uh, very focused on the object, the material object and the memories that, um, that are tied to them. And uh, their pictures are very much pictures of that of those things and you wouldn't know that they have stories or significance if you didn't like read the text and uh, some people are very attuned to the relationships in the home and for those people you look at the text and you see a lot of sentences like our we um, and a lot of things that remind them of relationships that happen within the house or of actual people in the house